Tesla's much anticipated earnings are released. Check this out. Let's turn to Tesla. The stock moving lower initially, but recovering close to the flat nine now. Well, it's down about 1%. Joining us now is Craig Irwin, senior research analyst at Roth Capital. Craig, it's great to have you on. We're still going through this report, which is always the tome every quarter. Yes. Uh, but do you want to get your initial takeaways, especially as revenue jumped 12% year over year? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was 6% uh, above uh, consensus in the quarter. So we knew they were going to beat the quarter, right, because the expiry of credits is always a little bit of a, a pull forward. Um, the real question is whether or not uh, they created a, a slightly smaller hole uh, that they get to fill in the, uh, in the December quarter. Um, their language in the Outlook, uh, the Outlook uh, statement where they say uh, it's difficult to measure the impact of shifting global trade and fiscal policies seems to suggest that they, they don't really have a clear view yet on um, whether or not the price adjustments that they put through are going to significantly dent uh, the momentum that they've picked up in the last several months. So, um, you know, they're being cautious here. Um, you know, the direction of the stock, though, coming out of the call is going to be a function of what they say on Optimus, what they say on, um, you know, uh, RoboTaxi, really, more than anything right now, and the outlook for them uh, removing the... Um, the surrogate drivers in these cars, um, you know, what's what's the potential there, and how, how do they see this taking shape over the next over the next number of months? Mm. Um, and and I got to interact with one of the Optimus robot variants a couple of weeks, just a couple of weeks ago at the Up Summit. I mean, it's pretty incredible, but it also still seems to me like it has a long way to go here. So, how much of this is based on that commentary about the future? versus the nearer term, especially when you do see things like, and I think it gets overshadowed a lot, um, you know, the energy business seems to be very strong too. Yeah, en energy strong. Um, the, the, the sort of tailwind from, you know, electricity prices up, you know, basically 40%. You know, over the last few years, um, it's, it's something that really does improve economics there. Uh, they will have real competition in there. They are the largest competitors. So they'll, they'll dominate like they do in everything that they do. Um, but it's, it's not nearly as large a market, at least in my view, as say, the potential for Optimus. And then the automotive market. And eventually EVs will come back and we'll be back, back in vogue. And Tesla's going to be the category king at that time still. So, um, you know, you have a variety of things that are kind of working for them. Um, right, right now, I'm just excited about Optimus. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, the, okay. the, the glitchiness that, that people sometimes talk about, is something that gets smoothed out with engineering over time. So, but how much volatility in the nearer term do investors need to be prepared for? I mean, it, it's been up for a bit. You're bullish, but your price target, I believe, um, is still 395, which would have almost 10% of downside uh, from here. So g given that the market overall valuation-wise is a little rich, um, could it be choppy? Yeah, no. So I, I'm never one to change my my price target. You know, once every couple of weeks. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not a big believer in that. I think you become more more a weather vane than an analyst at that point. You know, fundamentally, I, I see Tesla as a buy as a long term buy. You know, it's had a tremendous move in the last couple of months as people realized that Musk was back in the saddle, uh, that the the fences were mended with our president, um, that there's tremendous potential in several of these initiatives, and he's putting his talents to work in there. So, you know, the, the stock correctly reflects that that in the valuation. You know, now the catalysts, I think, are what they choose to show us about um, RoboTaxi, CyberCab, and what they choose to show us about Optimus. And the bigger question is whether or not they do that today at earnings mm -hmm. or in, uh, you know, on, on the 6th in their, in their shareholder meeting. For me, the Tesla story is no longer about selling cars. Here's why. Firstly, Tesla's energy business is scaling at an absolutely insane pace, growing 44% in revenue and 81% in deployments, while the car business crawls along at 6%. Energy revenue hit $3.4 billion in Q3, up 44% year over year. Tesla deployed a record 12.5 gigawatt hours of energy storage, up 81% from last year, and generated $1.1 billion in gross profits from that segment. A record. They launched Megapack 3 and Megablock, and they're ramping up a new Houston mega factory targeting 50 gigawatt hours of annual capacity starting in 2026. This is a business inside of Tesla that's seeing exploding growth and doesn't get much attention. The demand driver is crystal clear. Utilities and grid operators need massive battery storage because renewable energy doesn't generate consistently. Solar panels produced during the day, wind is intermittent, 
but electricity demand is fairly constant. You need giant batteries to store excess energy when production is high and release it when production drops. That's what Megapack solves. 12 and a half gigawatt hours deployed in one quarter is massive scale. These are shipping container sized installations that plug directly into power grids. Each project is worth tens of millions of dollars and utilized all over the world. For example, the Californian utilities are buying them, Australian grid operators are buying them, and even data centers are buying them for backup power. In addition, the Houston mega factory targeting 50 gigawatt hours of annual capacity shows where this is heading. Tesla is building industrial scale manufacturing for this because they see demand going exponential as more renewables come online and as electricity prices keep climbing. In Q3, we saw Tesla release the Megapack 3 and Megablock, which means Tesla is not just scaling the old product, they're iterating and improving. More energy density, easier installation, better economics. They're treating this like a product roadmap with continuous improvement, not a one and done solution. Over a billion dollars in gross profit from energy in one quarter proves this is a real business with healthy margins, not some speculative bet burning cash. Energy storage is profitable today while, exp while expanding aggressively. That combination is rare and valuable. Here's the trajectory. Grid scale storage is becoming essential infrastructure as the world electrifies and adds renewable capacity. The total addressable market is enormous. Global electricity grids represent trillions of dollars in infrastructure, even capturing a small percentage of grid modernization and renewable integration translates to a business worth tens of billions of dollars annually. But here's the reality. As long as Elon's talking about Optimus and Robotaxi on earning calls, nobody will care about Megapacks. The energy business is Tesla's most underrated asset, in my opinion, clearly growing faster than automotive, profitable today with a clear path to massive scale. It's just not quite as sexy as the robots. So speaking about the robots, in my opinion and not financial advice, Tesla's valuation has nothing to do with selling cars anymore. It's entirely about robotaxi scaling and Optimus reaching volume production. In Q3, Tesla launched a robotaxi service in the Bay Area, expanded in Austin, opened their app in the US and Canada for waiting lists, and has CyberCab volume production on track for 2026. Tesla's also installing first generation Optimus production lines, preparing for volume manufacturing. Robotaxi isn't a demo anymore, it's live in real cities with actual customers paying for rides. The Bay Area and Austin launches are small scale but their commercial deployments, not prototypes. The question is how fast this goes from a few cities to nationwide and at scale. Reconfirmation of CyberCat volume production in 2026 means Tesla is serious about manufacturing purpose-built autonomous vehicles at scale, and they're working towards that now. That's a different bet than retrofitting existing cars. They're designing vehicles specifically for ride hailing with no steering wheel, optimized for cost per mile. Optimus production lines being installed is the signal everyone should be watching. This will be moving humanoid robots from cool demos to we're preparing to manufacture these at scale. The gap between those two stages is enormous, but crossing it means Tesla thinks there's actual demand for robots that can do tasks within the capabilities of the Optimus robots they're building. Here's what I think the reality is. And again, this is just my opinion and not financial advice. If Tesla can get Robotaxi to work and scale, it's worth more than the entire automotive industry because you eliminate the driver's cost from every ride. If Optimus works, it's worth even more because you're selling physical labor at scale. Both of these markets dwarf selling cars. The car business is basically irrelevant to the investment thesis now. It's just the cash flow engine funding of the real bets. I don't think investors are buying Tesla for automotive growth. They're buying a call option on autonomous vehicles and humanoid robots. Ads are expensive and people don't trust them anymore, but they do trust YouTube. That's why three of our clients now make $100,000 a month for their business from growing a YouTube channel. If you run a business, book a call with me and I'll help you map this out.